I know this work. I don't know. Push that. Push this. We'll see. That's exciting. It's a pressure cooker. <laughs> Sitting next to me is my friend Tara from Living on a Dime. You may know her channel. If not, go check it out, Living on a Dime. And we're going to talk about how she got her start with her cookbook and how her channel grew yep. and the things she does on the side as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it kind of started as a fluke. I was on bed rest with my first pregnancy and I was reading Amy Decision's Tightwad Gazette. I remember and that. I thought, there's other people like us out there. Penny pinchers. Yes, there's Misers. other people. Because back then, in the 80s and early 90s, it was really considered, you were, you were considered kind of the low end of the totem pole if you were saving money, thrift stores, that kind of thing. That was not cool. And so I was so excited to know there was other people out there like us. And in her book, she happened to say, everyone wants me to write a Taiwan cookbook, but I don't have the time and I don't like to cook. And I thought, I'll write that cookbook. Little did I know it would completely change our whole life, that one little thought. But yeah, so that's how I kind of came up with the idea. Dining on a Dime. Dining on a Dime. Yep, Dining on a Dime cookbook, which actually the first name was Not Just Beans. 50 Years of Frugal Family Favorites. Um, I'm glad you changed the name. Dumb name. <laughs> I, what was I thinking? How did I sell 2,500 books with that know. name? That's what I want to know. How did I do that? Because actually, no, I sold I sold 7,500 books with that name before a publisher took over for five years, and they um, changed the name to Dining on a Dime Cookbook. Oh, the so, publisher did. That's a good yeah. name. Didn't and well. then had you already had Living on a Dime as a no? Channel? So then we had to change everything to Living on a Dime to go with the cookbook that was Dining gotcha. on a Dime. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it started well you know i like your cookbook <laughs> six copies six. <laughs> i yeah. ordered one for me and i got it loved it so yeah. i ordered i have five daughters one's vegan i didn't get her one but the other four i got one and then i won one on, a, yeah. on one of the talk shows yeah. and i got it for my daughter-in-law so go. we all got our dining on the dine cookbooks i like it because there's normal ingredients in the recipes yeah. And there's a lot more than just recipes. There's a lot of good tips on uh, how to set up your kitchen. Mm -hmm. And there's jokes. My husband liked the jokes in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you kind of have to laugh when you're cooking sometimes because it doesn't always go as planned as our live shows show. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's one of those things where mom and I kind of collaborated together. And I started writing it with my recipes and I'd say, oh, I need your recipe for blank or I need your recipe for blank and so after two years we both kind of you know worked on it together so yeah it was both mom and I and now how did I I, I know there were some magazine articles about yeah. living on a dime and, and then your little living on a dime lady logo where'd that come from and all that so okay so let me answer the easy question first the lady logo is actually just a stock photo we found <laughs> that we bought and we just turned we were like Wait a minute, she was holding a spoon or something and Mike photoshopped it, it's just she was holding money. Oh, cool. And it was For kind living of on a dime. Yeah. Gotcha. And she was kind of um a little bit half between mom and half between I. A little bit. So has my hair color, mom's body shape, I don't know. It was just we just it's thought, catchy oh, though. You see yeah. it, you know, living on a dime. That's what yeah. we wanted, people mm -hmm. to know that it was us. And so the magazine's article started when I wrote the book and I told Mike, I said, okay, the book's done. Um, I need $9,000 so we can print 2,500 copies. And he was like, what? <laughs> you do know I'm making, you know, like $10 an hour. <laughs> and I said, I know, but I've already sold like 2,000, 2,500, somewhere around there. Wow pre-sold that many cookbooks cool. before I even got it back from the printer. He's like, okay, let's give this a go. And um, he thought I was just going to write, you know, like a little pamphlet just for me, nothing big. He never dreamed it would be this by any means. And so uh, I did the pre-sales 
And then we were able to keep selling so that we paid off the whole $9,000 in a year. Very good. And uh, with the name Not Just Beans and a crazy cover, it was a crazy cartoon cover too. So then people just like the content. Yeah. And it just goes to show if you have really good content, people will come. Well, now it's yeah. got a beautiful cover yeah. that matches my kitchen. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, if you've it does. seen my kitchen, I've got yeah. a vintage kitchen with red and gray and white, and, and yeah. the cover is checkerboard, red, and I love the cover. Yeah. So it looks great in my kitchen, and I love the recipes. I love the print in the book. It's big enough, you can read yeah. it. And there's mm -hmm. one, it's mostly one recipe to a page on most of mostly, them. Mostly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we tried to do that to make it easy for people to see. It is. I hate it when you open a cookbook and you can't, right. you know, you have to get a magnifying glass. Right. So, right. yeah. So then we took, after those, after we sold the first initial batch, after that, since then, we have saved the money aside before we buy anything else for the next printing. So now every time we go, we save aside that cash. So we ne we have not ever been in debt since then. Wow. Now the magazine articles you were asking mm -hmm. about was, I had to sell it. But websites aren't, and books don't just aren't, if you write it, they will come. Uh, I had already done a lot of pre-marketing, uh, which I didn't realize I was doing at the time, by talking to my frugal living people at Parents Place. and. They were just like, oh, this sounds great. Oh, you're using, you're putting that recipe in? Oh, I want that cookbook. I didn't realize it was marketing at the time, but I right, was. Right, And so these were websites. Uh-huh. So these were websites. Well, then I wanted to branch out, so I wrote magazine articles. For Countryside uh, Magazine was our very first, it's a homesteading type magazine, our very first articles we did. And my only advertising I ever did except for Facebook, so I've only spent $200 in, in advertising ever. And people don't realize I had the four ingredient cookbook lady say, I asked her advice and she said, marketing is five, or writing the book is 5% of the work and marketing is 95% wow. of the work. And I'm telling you, she's wrong. Yeah. Marketing is 98% of the work <laughs> and writing it is 2% of the work. <laughs> I would almost go to 99 and wow. one because really, it does nothing if you don't market it. It really, it's all in the marketing. It really is. Mm -hmm. Even with social media and everything today, it, or jump forward to 2016, we decided to start YouTube again. We started with a few recorded shows and then in June 2016, we started the live shows. That is the first time we made more than a dollar an hour doing this. Wow, yeah. And the live yeah. shows are great. She does yeah. them Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yep. And I'm Eastern, so it's it's 6:30 6 30 yeah. Eastern time. And each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, she'll cook a recipe from her cookbook. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, I and enjoy occasionally it. we'll do things on how to live one on in, one income. And the whole family's something. involved yeah. in those videos. Yeah, well, all the kids are on. Well, most of the kids, the teenagers are working now, so they're kind of in and out. But yeah, that's the live shows are what really pushed us forward. And Tara's a roll with the punches type of girl. <laughs> And That's a good uh, way to put it. she doesn't plan ahead very often. <laughs> like we're in Pennsylvania right now, and Ellie and I have no idea where we're staying tonight. <laughs> okay, we'll find a place. It's Labor Day weekend. No big deal. So if something goes wrong on the live stream, it's oh well. Don't do it that way. Do it this way. But usually it goes well. But you know, it's funny. <laughs> Here I saw that as a problem, and it is actually a it's blessing. It's entertaining. It's entertaining. The, it is. And people, I had one lady say, the other day I threw my chicken in an unwashed Instapot I had opened live, opened the box, threw Horrors. it in. Horrors! Horrors, girl! <laughs> and I threw it in unwashed and cooked it live on the show, and this lady emailed me, she said, I just realized with you, I don't need to worry about things as much as I work. She said, I saw you do that, and then you ate it, and you were alive the next day. She said, I'm not worried about this. So see, I'm I noticed people. the instruction book wasn't anywhere around after you opened up that pot. Either. I don't do instructions. I'm not. Yeah, so we just roll with the punches on our show. It's like, you know, one time I forgot baking powder, so I'm scraping out my pumpkin bread, and I'm putting it back in after I'd already had it in the little mini muffin pans and people I think like it because they realize wait I can save my pumpkin bread but I'm not the only one who does that you yeah. know yep yeah I've done it 
Yeah. I wasn't live on TV, but our live <laughs> show, but I did it. Well, and some days I say, you know, I'm just here to serve as a warning to others. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. You know, well, what? you do that well. You're, what did I say to you once? It wasn't that you don't plan ahead. It's that you do well under pressure. Yes. There you go. <laughs> See? See, you're going to look at the bright side. Yeah. Me, I'm always like... Oh, I'm a total failure. That was horrible. <laughs> but yeah, you just kind of roll with the punches. Now, so. tell me about your mom had a very big viral YouTube video. <laughs> so my mom is the how to fold a fitted sheet lady. Yes. yes. I'm sure everyone has seen it by now. <laughs> it's had, we have 17 million views. That's amazing. And we know that we've lost at least 50 million views to people who have stolen our video. That's all that we can account for. I'm sure it's millions, millions wow, more. But crazy. yeah, my mom is the how to fold a fitted sheet lady, and she's kind of what pushed our YouTube channel. We had no idea. We were like, fold a fitted sheet. Who wants to know how to do that? And 50 now, million people want to know. <laughs> and now Lowe's is making commercials. Wow. About I didn't joking know that. about yeah, oh. they're joking about. I thought about emailing them saying, hey, that's us. <laughs> um, that's but fun. yeah, it's when you get it down. Do you know how to fold a fitted sheet? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. People either say they really, it's great. They showed them how, or they're like, that's witchcraft. I have no idea what you were doing. I can't figure it out. Yeah. And once you get it figured out, it's pretty easy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, get it all really the corners is. together, then fold the, 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 the bendy parts in, and then. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Get yourself to a rectangle. And you know what else you do after that is you fold both your sheets, and you fold one of your pillowcases. And you take them all and you put, put them in, in the yep. other pillowcase yeah. and fold it over and set it on your shelf and it's all together. There you go. Yeah. You're all done. That works yeah. good. Well, mm -hmm. that's that's what we're known for is how to fold a fitted sheet. Never dreamed it in the whole wide world, mm -hmm. but that would, mm -hmm. yeah, that's crazy. So, anyway. Well, thank you, Tara, for coming by You're and welcome. joining me on my channel. Thank you. And we are here in beautiful Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, oh, watching the nice. Amish buggies yeah. go by, eating Pennsylvania Dutch food. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it really is as good as they say. Yeah, it is. So, yep. Thanks for coming by. Thank and you for catch, having me. Catch Tara on her channel, Living on a Dime, and you'll see a link for her Dining on a Dime cookbook there. Yeah. In my description, there's a link for her Dining on a Dime. Click on her description. I do get a little bit of a. Yeah. Right. She's got an affiliate link, so. But I wouldn't have bought five cookbooks if I wasn't no. right. <laughs> Yeah, she bought five before she decided to be our affiliate. So, yeah. See you guys later. Bye bye.